So welcome to um, TechSoup. This is new member orientation and Q&A. Um, this is how you engage in this webinar. You are on mute, of course, you know that by now. We would love for you to type your questions in the Q&A. And I'm telling you, we have some great team members. We're gonna answer all your questions, hopefully. Check your email box. We're gonna send you the video replay and the slides. Slides have hyperlinks. So there may be some items that we talk about that you can click on the hyperlink and gain some more insights. If you need the closed caption, just tap on the CC button at the bottom of your Zoom screen where it says CC and you'll be able to use the closed caption. And I think that's it for me. Am I turn this over to you, Nick? What's the next slide? Oh, yeah, let's let's turn it over to Nick. Welcome, everybody. Hi, everybody. And uh, at least where I am, good morning. It is rainy, rainy, rainy here in Oakland, California. Hopefully no mudslides take me out from being able to present the rest of this presentation this morning. Um, but I hope wherever you are, you have a slightly warmer environment than I do this morning. Um, Welcome to today's webinar on uh, new member orientation for TechSoup. My name is Nick Finn. I'm a, the head of global growth marketing at TechSoup. Um, we do a lot of education with nonprofits around all sorts of different technology issues. Um, and since most folks on this call are new to TechSoup um, or in an organization that has just started using TechSoup, um, we're gonna start by going over some key terms that you may have heard in this general area of nonprofit technology, you'll hear the term civil society, um, which really is the whole community globally of change makers and do-gooders, the folks on this call um, who are working in nonprofits and charities and other non-governmental organizations uh, to serve their community, to act out a mission that might be ignored by business or government interests, um, and to help build a more equitable planet. Um, and that is at the core of TechSoup's own mission statement. Um, you'll also hear about digital transformation, um, which I wanna just explain as it's the act of embracing digital technology as a way to improve your nonprofit's functions and program delivery. It's, it's uh, you know working with technology um, and leveraging it as they say in the industry, um, to do more and to do better. Um, you'll also hear the phrase digital resilience, which is very related to digital transformation, but it's the notion of how can your nonprofit's technology help you to respond, adapt, and continue to serve communities when there's some kind of external disruption going on or crisis. Um, you know, I joked about mudslides, but while I'm not gonna get one today in Oakland, um, other folks in California are experiencing that right now and there are nonprofits on the ground where that is happening. And for them, digital resilience is a real thing if they're being impacted by something like that. Um, and then you'll hear the phrase cloud adoption, um, not really a new phrase anymore, but the notion of cloud adoption really is all about moving to platforms and data structures that that rely on the distributed memory and computing power of the World Wide Web, the internet, right? And this means that your information is not stored just on a local computer um, where it may not be safe and could be easily lost and instead is being stored in the cloud in a way that you can access securely uh, and protect the integrity of that data if something were to happen to the physical location where your computer is, is, is located. So those are just some four key terms I want you to keep in mind that kind of set the overall context for what TechSoup is, how we work with nonprofits. And so let's get into the meat of that discussion. What is TechSoup? Well, like you on this call, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Um, and that's important to call out right on the front end because a lot of people actually mistakenly think that TechSoup is just another business that sells technology. And that is absolutely not what we are. We're a 501c3. We have a nonprofit mission and we have a perspective. Our perspective is, as the previous slide probably suggested, um, technology, in our opinion, can be a profoundly powerful tool for nonprofits. Uh, and we want to help you find the right technology and then use it to accomplish your mission, whatever that might be. Um, 
We support nonprofits in the United States and around the world um, who are working with tech to make a more equitable planet. Part of the way we do that is we host a catalog on our website, techsoup.org, of offers from major technology companies, everybody from Microsoft, Dell, Intuit, Adobe, and many, many, many more, which we'll look at in more depth in a few minutes here. Um, this is our effort to help nonprofits by trying to bring together philanthropic offers from the technology industry in one place so that nonprofits can come to TechSoup, find those offers, and then use some of those products affordably. We have discounted and donated offers. And again, we'll touch on more of that in detail shortly. Along with the technology products for major tech companies that we host in the TechSoup catalog, we also offer nonprofits and only nonprofits a number of affordable services to help you as you use technology. We understand very clearly <clears throat> that getting a new technology product, whether it's a piece of software or hardware, is often just the beginning, not the end solution. It means next that you have to cope with things like, how do I deploy this technology? How do I train my staff to use it properly? How do I make sure it's secure? I may not know all the details of how to implement this properly or manage it over time. These are all service requirements and TechSoup has put together a series of different services that we'll touch on in a few minutes um, to help nonprofits as they manage their own technology stack. So we've got a catalog of products. We've also got a set of services, but there's more. We also create all sorts of educational resources to help nonprofits self-educate around the technology that they have to learn more about what's going on in the tech marketplace and in some cases find use cases and examples of how other nonprofits are using specific tech products to accomplish and further their mission. And then like most of you on this call again, we also have our own grant-based programming that we engage in. We work with big funders to receive grant funding that we then do all sorts of technology-based initiatives, um, whether it be around, you know, fighting back against disinformation, closing the digital divide, giving the public access to public data sets in a way that they can actually work with them. Um, so like many nonprofits, TechSoup does a lot of different things and it really depends on which part of us you're engaging with. But for today's purposes, we're gonna zero in on a couple of key features that I think really help here. Um, we serve nonprofits of all sizes, again, in the United States and globally, everything from extremely large nonprofits with over $100 million budgets down to very, very small nonprofits who may have zero full-time staff. Maybe they have a part-time executive director, uh, a, an annual budget of maybe less than even $50,000 that they spend on all their nonprofits' needs, and everything in between. We serve all of those nonprofit sizes. Um, and we work across the broad spectrum of issues and functions that nonprofits work in, like the topical areas that matter to them, as this chart is just illustrating everything from like housing activities to civil rights, there's business and professional organizations, environmental organizations, sports and recreation nonprofits out there, lots of youth activities, health services and related activities. It's really fascinating once you start drilling into how many different types of nonprofits there are out there, even just in the United States. When you look at the broad array of topical areas that they address, it's really impressive, actually. Right, so let's talk about the TechSoup catalog that I mentioned at the top, where we host products for major tech companies, often with donated or discounted offers. Um, and we are trying to centralize those, bring them into one space so that nonprofits can come to TechSoup and find those offers. Um, here's a quick screenshot of the TechSoup uh, homepage. And this is how you would access the catalog. A pretty clear button right there in the middle of the homepage. You could also go up to the product catalog in the menu at the top of the screen. Um, and what are you going to find when you get in there? Well, 
there would be a whole lot of different offers that you could access. Now, I've just clicked through to the live TechSoup site here. Um, and uh, let me just close a couple of these tabs here. Um, now on the live site, you'll see that we can hit that browse catalog button and it's gonna take us to the home page of the actual TechSoup catalog, right? And here you can scroll through and then quickly dive into all sorts of different offers that you might be interested in. Everything from Microsoft Office to Adobe Acrobat, Intuit QuickBooks. There are hardware options that are available there. You'll see at the bottom that we also call out some of those services as well. I'm going to go ahead and close that here and just go back to the slide deck itself. Um, let's talk about what is ostensibly the, the largest scale corporate partnership that TechSoup uh, is engaged with, and that's with Microsoft. Um, we have worked with Microsoft almost from the inception of TechSoup. They encouraged TechSoup very early on to dream big about the ways in which we might best serve nonprofits. Um, well, sorry, I bumped that backwards. Um, and in the very early days of TechSoup, back in the late 80s and early 90s, you, you will hear stories from the staff who worked then that early versions of TechSoup were literally in the Bay Area realizing that there were lots of extra CD-ROMs available of Windows 98. And could we just take those and distribute them to local nonprofits so that they would have an up-to-date operating system that was more secure to work with, right? The world's obviously moved a long way since then. Today's offers from Microsoft that we host um, are much more sophisticated offers. Uh, for instance, really the core one is Microsoft 365, which is the cloud-based version of Microsoft Office, right? It's that suite of programs that we are used to working with from Microsoft, Word, PowerPoint, Excel. Um, those are all united with Outlook into a, a web-based uh, platform that hosts your email, all sorts of productivity tools in there, et cetera. Uh, TechSoup is a certified Microsoft partner to provide access to Microsoft 365. And as we'll touch on later, we also provide additional services to nonprofits who are trying to you know, scope out and implement Microsoft 365. And we'll talk more about that. Um, obviously also through TechSoup, you can also access Microsoft's pro full operating system. You know, We're talking about Windows 11 right now or whatever the new versions of that will be in the future or something that would come through TechSoup as well, I assume. Um, Adobe is another very significant partner for TechSoup. If you work specifically in graphic design or web production, or even some folks on the call might be print production um, veterans, um, we've all been touched by uh, Adobe products over the course of our careers now. If you work in those fields, um, they uh, pretty much invented the PDF, the portable document format. Um, and uh, these days at TechSoup, the most popular offers are these, Creative Cloud, which is a very sophisticated package of design and production software. <laughs> it's the kind of thing that if you work with outside designers or have one on staff yourself, they're probably working with Creative Cloud programs. Acrobat Pro DC is pretty much like the industry standard for managing PDF documents. And then Adobe's latest offer through TechSoup is something called Adobe Express. It's a more streamlined, easier to use uh, one-off um, production software package. It's it's great for like producing online images, stuff, stuff for social media. And the expectation is that you don't have to have the degree of uh, sophisticated training that Creative Cloud might require you to have in order to use Adobe Express. Um, Intuit QuickBooks is another huge partnership for TechSoup. Lots of nonprofits, particularly in the context of the pandemic four years ago, really started to remember that it's not good enough to have a paper and pencil accounting system at your nonprofit. You really do need to have a digital system and even just doing it in a spreadsheet is not a great practice either. Um, Intuit QuickBooks is a natural fit for nonprofits. Um, Online Plus, I believe, is the version most folks are using. There's also an advanced version of it and both are worth checking out if you're not already using Intuit QuickBooks at your nonprofit. There are all sorts of additional offers available through the TechSoup catalog. 
Um, I'm not going to go deeply into all of them here, um, but just as you can see from a smattering of some of these corporate logos, like we, we really have done the work to build relationships with, with uh, these technology creation companies. Um, you know, and of course, like TechSoup's own uh, headquarters, while we are mainly a distributed staff at this point, um, headquartered in downtown San Francisco, we are able to, you know, keep our eyes on what's going on in the tech industry because we are in cl very close proximity to them, at least to the Silicon Valley pieces of it here. And so do really try to pay active attention to new things that might be very helpful to nonprofits as they come through. Right. We've only talked about software so far, but a really growing area of TechSoup's work with nonprofits also involves access to hardware. Again, as I just mentioned, the pandemic was a real reminder to us of how those supply chain issues can really be tricky for nonprofits. They drive the prices of hardware up. They make it hard to find the things that you need. There are long wait times sometimes. You know, a lot of that has really been resolved now, but not all of it. Um, and that is just to say that like TechSoup can also be a place where you may be able to find the hardware at a price point that your nonprofit is willing to work with um, versus just going out onto the open market and maybe paying even higher rates. Uh, you can find the hardware links on the TechSoup site um, under the product catalog. You have to click the product catalog and then you'll see the hardware uh, button there on the left. Um, Let's go into it a little bit more deeply. Um, we have we provide access to both new and refurbished laptops and desktops at TechSoup. Um, you know the new ones are available through partnerships with like HP and Dell and Lenovo. Um, but the refurbished line of business is in particular something I do want to highlight because, well, first of all, TechSoup was one of the pioneers in suggesting that we shouldn't just assume that an unused or slightly slightly used computer is too old and, you know, should be thrown away and create all sorts of e-waste, um, that in fact, many of these units can actually be uh, certified, refurbished um, and available at a slightly lower cost than just a brand new unit. Um, and uh, we saw that very much in line with our own nonprofit mission of trying to be a greener business, of paying attention to the environment and following good conservation practice. Um, and uh, it's great to see that, in fact, that whole line of refurbished materials is something that has been uh, embraced by the larger technology community and and now TechSoup isn't isn't for sure the only provider of refurbished hardware, but but we still are one of them, and uh, it's some it was one of our ideas, um, and so it's great to see that happening. Um, as I said, with uh, our partnerships with Dell, Lenovo, and HP, you could also get access to brand new units through those uh, companies, um, and uh, you know some of the other bits of hardware that. TechSoup does have access to uh, include mobile devices, monitors, some networking equipment, printers, um, and an exciting addition, literally as I edited the deck this morning before we went live with this webinar, we also have the MetaQuest Pro virtual reality headset now in the catalog, which is exciting. Um, not every nonprofit knows how they would use virtual reality yet. But there are some great use cases out there of nonprofits who are using it in all sorts of ways, particularly for um, education and training purposes. Um, they're very interesting applications for VR across uh, both physical health and mental health and access to care. Um, and so we're excited over the long term here to see how nonprofits are actually going to leverage that particular piece of hardware. Okay, so those are the technology products, the software and the hardware um, overview from TechSoup. But as I said, we also understand that really getting technology is only the beginning of the journey for a lot of nonprofits. And in fact, the harder part may be, how do you implement the technology? How do you manage it? How do you troubleshoot it? How do you make sure it's doing what you wanted it to do? How do you train your staff to use it properly? How do you keep it secure? So many questions, and TechSoup is, of course, here to help answer some of those questions um, with a suite of services that we've put together 
Um, and uh, let's go into that in a little more depth now. So you find the services there again in the drop down menu at the top. Um, we are already behind in updating our navigation. We have several new services that launched at the end of the year that don't appear yet. Um, so, you know, stand by to see some of those uh, making it into the navigation soon. Um, let's talk about our help desk service, um, which is sort of like, a, a, it's the one-off service. It's the bare minimum that we would come in and help you um, virtually to troubleshoot some usually piece of hardware that's really giving you trouble. Um, it's a $35 monthly commitment. You can do it 350 across the year, um, but it's for a small scale thing. Um, really what a lot of nonprofits actually gravitate toward at TechSoup is something called managed IT. Managed IT is a service where we are helping nonprofits manage their entire technology stack. Um, and so if you're in an environment where you're using tech, um, you maybe don't have adequate staffing levels to manage all that tech properly, then managed IT might be a really great thing for you to check out in some greater detail and think about and see if TechSoup can help you manage your own tech stack if you don't have the staff to do that. Um, you know, those of us, again, working in communications or marketing and those kinds of fields really understand profoundly how the web, how a website has just revolutionized how an organization can present information and communicate, right? Um, it's just this channel that we never had before. And now it's the dominant channel that we might use to communicate um, with the public, with stakeholders, with our own board members sometimes, with journalists, all, almost anybody who wants to learn about us can go to our websites and learn about us. Um, and almost every nonprofit I've ever talked to, when you ask them about their website, always say something to the extent of like, oh gosh, it needs a lot of help, right? Nobody really feels like their website actually truly reflects the full scope and wonderfulness of their nonprofit work. Everybody's always trying to make it better. Embracing that philosophy, we have also launched a series of website services that are available to help nonprofits figure out what to do with their website. Do they need a brand new one? Is it secure enough? How can you work with what you've got? Do you need some custom consultation to talk it through? You know, there are lots of consultants out there in the world who can help you with this. But one of the great things about coming through TechSoup is, you know, we are working with consultants on this as well. But these folks are really dedicated to specifically helping the nonprofit sector, which means you're not just going to get somebody's effort to like jam your nonprofit's existence into a business oriented website that may have very different goals than what your goals are. So website services are something definitely worth taking a look at. Um, in addition, for some folks who really do have to get engage in outbound marketing campaigns, and not everybody does need to do that, um, but for folks who do, we have a separate set of um, nonprofit marketing services that we've also started putting out there that would be worth looking at if you really are in a position where your nonprofit has to do a lot of marketing. Um, if you don't quite have your website yet, maybe you're brand new and working on putting it together and you don't even know what your domain is and maybe aren't even sure what a domain is or how to get it, domain registration through TechSoup is a helpful way to get the URL that you want your nonprofit to be using. Um, and then of course, once you've got that, then you can start working with us on website services and see if we can get a site up together. And then the final service I want to call out <clears throat> that's pretty important is Office 365 email and data migration. Um, thousands of nonprofits have worked with TechSoup now to move to the Microsoft 365 platform that I mentioned at the top of the hour. Um, it really is, you know, the platform of choice when we're talking about how to leverage Microsoft's technologies. Um, and, uh, Again, once you get that platform, you still face real issues of how do I bring my existing data set into that platform so that everybody still has access to their historic email and data. And we have a service designed to help your nonprofit do exactly that. Um, 
Finally, I do want to call out a fun thing in our um, navigation for services as well called the digital assessment tool. This is a great example of some of um, the overlap between our work directly with nonprofits and then grant funded work. TechSoup has built out this digital assessment tool as a way for nonprofits to be able to actually assess different functional areas like finance, for instance, or uh, communications, um, and to run through a series of questions that you answer around your nonprofit to kind of assess like what's your level of sophistication digitally within each of these areas. Uh, and that digital assessment tool um, is a fun resource to go through. It might help you like understand better where your nonprofit is perhaps both doing well and then what areas it might need some help on. Um, and maybe that's even something you can then actually leverage into a grant proposal, explaining how you're going to use a particular funding stream to increase your nonprofit's digital resilience. Lots of possibilities there. Okay. Now, I want to hit on two other things here that fall outside just that technology product, technology service, um, and talk a little bit about your own relationship with TechSoup and what TechSoup membership actually looks like. So um, we are introducing membership models to TechSoup here in the near future, but they're very much based around traditional things which you're used to seeing from TechSoup in terms of uh, uh, special offers and discounts. I want to really focus on one of them right now, which is TechSoup Boost. Boost has been in our catalog for years now. Um, Boost is sort of like TechSoup on steroids. It is the place where you can join TechSoup with a $99 annual fee, right, for, at the organization's level, right? So once your organization, your nonprofit is a TechSoup Boost member, everyone in the org can use that Boost account, right? And really the primary uh, the primary point of Boost is that it actually like gives you even greater discounts um, and greater access to pricing breaks. And it's really good if you're a nonprofit who already thinks of themselves as fairly digitally savvy and you like exploring new tools and you want a little bit of support in doing that, right? Like you want to not just have to go out and grab at the price point that you find on the open market, but instead you can come to TechSoup and you can see all sorts of different savings levels using TechSoup Boost. I, I recommend checking it out. Um, and uh, beyond Boost, we also have a newer product in the catalog called Quad. Quad is the premium level of engagement with TechSoup, right? You remember at the beginning of this deck, I was talking about how we serve nonprofits of all sorts of size. And you can expect, of course, that much larger nonprofits, for instance, have much more sophisticated and complex technology needs. Um, Quad is a product that really helps a nonprofit that is already deeply digital go all the way with TechSoup. It's the place where you'll find the most valuable content that we put together. You can get like customized webinars, which are going doing deep dives into particular issues around different platforms. Um, so if you really think of yourself as being like an extremely complex digital environment, I'd suggest you think about Quad and we'll have more to say about Quad over time as well. Um, the membership level right now for Quad is $200 annually per organization, again. So like you rough that out, I think before the call, we're saying that's maybe like $16 a month, right? And again, that's an organizational membership, not an individual person membership. So um, think of it that way. Right. Now I want to bring forward one of my favorite people at TechSoup, Kelly Garrett. Kelly um, works in TechSoup's customer service department. Um, and Kelly's going to share a little bit about how our customer service department can best serve you. Um, and uh, so, Kelly, take it away. Thank you so much, Nick. Um, hello, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Um, hanging in there as uh, getting through uh, winter and into spring. I know where I'm at. We're getting rained out right now. So hope everyone's warm and safe somewhere. 
Um, I am the associate manager for the account management group in client services. Basically, we handle all the customer service um, at TechSoup. So when you register with us, we handle the qualification process. When you have questions, uh, comments, concerns, you've talked to us about it, and we can assist you with different things and help you, um, you know, use TechSoup to the best of your abilities. Um, this question did It come up in a Q&A posts. Um, how do I learn about products? Where is the information? You know, yeah, how much am I spending on it? So I want to go over that with you all because it's really useful so that you don't have to, you know, get on live chat with us and make and try to uh, get in contact with us when you've got the information right here on the website. So first things first, I always tell folks is that once you've gone through the different drop downs or you've used the magnifying glass to find a product, you've clicked on it like Nick's talked about earlier today. Um, you're going to have this what's called an offers details page or a product page. On this page, you're going to see at the very top, the admin fee is listed in bright red, quantities underneath it. If you're logged in like I am here, you'll see add to cart. And then underneath it, you know, you can add as many organizations to your one TechSoup member account as you want. So say if you're a consultant and you have a lot of organizations you're working with, you absolutely can just have one TechSoup account to manage all of them. When you're making a request, you just want to make sure you see it's the four. So mine says test, test. You'd want to make sure it says for your organization. And you can always access that information in your My Account area, which is that little um, round icon in the top right corner with the little uh, person outlined. Um, so always want to check there first. Is this the, um, are you logged in and able to add it to the cart? Do you see the correct organization listed? Then also it's important to look at you know, what are you getting here? Is it an online cloud product that will work on any platform? Is it PC specific? Is it Mac specific? Really important to make sure you're looking at that stuff um, before checking out. Quite a few of our nonprofit um, programs that we're partnered with have no refunds and no exchange policies. So you really want to make sure you're confident about what you're requesting before you check out because you might not be able to return it if it's a mistake of I needed a PC version and I got the Mac version um things along those lines so please 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 make sure to check all that information first and then I recommend going down to the next level so the little box that highlights those things I know it's gray on white so it can be a little hard to see um it's something we are aware of but you want to make sure you click through all three of these tabs, because this is going to answer pretty much all of your questions. The, for example, I saw quite a few questions about QuickBooks today. So QuickBooks Online Plus, you know, what do I pay to out or into it? What do I pay to you guys? So you'll see here it actually in that second paragraph calls out that every 12 months you are going to pay TechSoup this admin fee. And it doesn't mention anything about being a discounted rate. This is the, the subscription fee. Every year you're going to pay TechSoup a $75 admin fee to renew your subscription. Now, if you were to click on the middle tab, the subscription details, it would then go into what's not included. So there is, for example, add-on services for QuickBooks Online. That would be... Um, Quick, uh, add on, add on services like payroll for QuickBooks Online, Intuit hasn't decided to include in their nonprofit program. So those aren't included. So if you are using add on fees, or sorry, add on services, you will see additional fees directly from Intuit because it's their product. They're charging you for it. They didn't include it in their nonprofit program. So really, really important to make sure you go through all three of these tabs, thoroughly read all of the information. It should usually answer your questions. And I will get into how you can contact us if you need to ask us any questions about the product, the service, you know, is it, you know, a yearly fee? Is it not? All that stuff we can answer for you. Um, but a lot of times it's going to be outlined here in the three tabs of information. Uh, awesome. So how do I get support? That's a common question we hear as well. So the first things first, whether you're logged in or not, doesn't matter, um, is you can always go to our TechSoup support page. It's something that we've recently um, relaunched and really invested a lot of time and energy to get all of the most common questions we hear for TechSoup in general. We're also starting to develop um, program FAQs in there. So you'll see Microsoft already has one into what we're developing right now. So a lot more information um, will be in this um, 
TechSoup support article section. You access it by clicking help at the very top right of the screen next to where you log in or join, or if you're already logged in next to where your cart and you're accessing your My Account area is. Next, please. So once you get into TechSoup support, a couple different options. Um, I always recommend, you know, typing in some keywords in the search area. That should help you get to the articles you're looking for or the information you're looking for. Um, we also have different subjects outlined here. And if you scroll down this page, you will see the promoted articles. These are really common ones. Um, so that is something that I recommend checking out. I'm going to put into the webinar channel. This is the uh, text, to, uh, sorry, the, I'm putting into our Zoom channel right now um, the URL for this landing page. It's support.techsoup.org. Um, so you might want to bookmark that. Um, I usually recommend it. Really great place to start for finding information after you've reviewed offer details and things like that. Next slide, please. So how, um, you know, what is out there? What's available? Nick just went all over it. But if you don't want to go back through and rewatch this webinar every time you're curious of, oh, what was that service that was mentioned? Or what was quad again? Things like that. We do have a great support article here that outlines pretty much everything that we have available that has to do with support services and resources. So quad, um, you'll see product information's right down there. That's how you look at the product page like I'm going on over right now. Um, there's talk about how you can connect with the customer success that Kevin's in charge or part of, things along those lines. So really recommend um, bookmarking this one as well. And I just dropped that into the chat for you as well. So keeping this in mind, that's a great one. And that's important to keep in mind because TechSoup customer service, what, what, what can we do for you? So TechSoup customer what? service, sorry, my dog's barking in the background. Um, TechSoup customer service can assist you with your TechSoup account management, um, eligible eligibility questions, you know, that's a big one. Um, not every organization is going to be eligible for every nonprofit program out there. It's pretty important um, to recognize that these are donation and discount programs. Um, partners of ours do have their own philanthropic goals that they're trying to meet. And sometimes they're going to limit their focus. Um, sometimes they are focusing on just one type of organization or organizations that are under a certain budget or organizations in a certain region, things along those lines. So it's not a comment on really what your organization does when you're not eligible for something. It is just a comment on what the partner's trying to focus on with their philanthropic goals that, that year or those years. Um, so just to keep in mind, if you're trying to check out, you can't check out, it says you're not eligible. Um, you might want to look at that. Uh, usually there's low messaging and it tells you that. And then also on the product page we went over, there is an eligibility tab on the right side that you can review. And you can always contact uh, customer service um, if you have questions about your eligibility. Um, things we can't assist you with. Um, we are not IT support. That's why we have the wonderful TechSoup services available to you. Customer service is basically general customer service. Um, we can answer general questions about the products. We can provide support resources we've been given, but we're not IT support. We're not product support and we're not in-depth product functionality tra uh, trained to answer those kinds of questions. We have a lot of partners. They create and own the offers that we have on our website. A lot of times they're the best person to ask about functionality. They're the ones to ask about download support, things along those lines. But you're always welcome to start with TechSoup customer service first, and then we can kind of point you on where to go from there. Next slide, please. So something that did recently change in January is that we have switched to a chat only environment. And I like to say live chat because it really calls out that it is a live contact option. It is with real people. We do not use chat AI or a chat bot to work with you. So when you use this as an option, we are going to be working with you. It's a live person. You're going to get what you need. Um, and then we can always follow up by email if you have to go or if we need to follow up with you on things. But the chat's been really nice. Um, we've been able to get documentation for qualification right away. We're able to see kind of maybe what, what um, web page you're on. You can send us things a little bit easier. So we did um, really look at this and we decided to move forward with live chat only. Um, so there's no longer a phone um, call center that you can contact. Um, and we do have a great TechSoup support article on how to contact us, as you see right there. 
Um, this is definitely one to keep in mind as well. And maybe check, um, when you're, before you contact us, I recommend that because, you know, you never know with ours, you know, stuff comes up, tech issues come up. We're a nonprofit as well. We have our own limited resources. So I always recommend checking here first to make sure that you're within our business hours. There's no notifications about delays, anything along those lines should usually get you going, um, and help you figure out, um, you know, is there something you can do in the meantime, or you need to come back later when we're a little less late? Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, the hours currently are, and again, always subject to change depending on member needs and what TechSuite can support. Um, but the hours currently are Monday through Thursday. We are available through live chat, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific. On Fridays, it's from 7 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And we resume from 4 to 2. And again, this is Pacific time zone. I've heard from a lot of members that have trouble contacting us and they're in a different time zone and they, they're they just missing our hours because of that nuance. So always keep in mind Pacific time zone. And then really important to keep in mind for the live chat, we have had reports that the live chat button isn't always visible. So, you know, a couple of things we recommend, our website runs best on a computer. It's not really designed for mobile devices or like iPads or things like that. We do recommend using a computer when navigating it or when reaching out for support. Um, we've also heard from some of our members that are IT professionals that um, older versions of browsers can um, cause issues with widgets on all websites. So it's something to keep in mind that you want to make sure you're having the most current version of your browser on the market installed on your computer when trying to contact us via chat. Um, Pop-up blockers and ad blockers are always important to check if you're not seeing our help bubble or seeing the uh, live chat option within the help button or bubble. Um, and then trying to use another browser or another device is always something we recommend for website issues. It could be your browser. It could be the connection to your device. So just make sure that, you know, you're trying all of these options when you don't see us during the Pacific time zones that we have outlined. Um, it's rare for us not to be adhering to this schedule. Uh, so if you're not seeing it, you're in the right time zone. It's probably a browser or device issue. Um, so something to keep in mind. Perfect. And I believe that was the last one I had there. Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. Always enjoy talking at you, I guess, and with you in the chat. And um, have a great rest of your week now. Great. And now I'm going to bring forward another great colleague of mine, Kevin Mulhall. Um, and uh, Kevin is part of the customer success team. And so, like, again, to differentiate the two angles here, Kelly and the customer support team are going to help you with your relationship with TechSoup. Kevin and the customer success team are going to help you with your relationship with the products and services you're using. All you, Kevin. Thanks, Nick. Um, that introduction, I, I almost feel like there's nothing else to kind of add to that, but uh, there, there sort of is. Um, so I'm Kevin Mulhall. I'm a senior technical customer success manager um, on the CS team here. Um, so really, I just wanted to, to spend maybe a minute or two minutes just to talk about kind of the space that we occupy or, or it, you know, or operate in. Um, to Nick's point, uh, we sit somewhere between or within the hierarchy of uh, general customer support and, and then managed um, assistance uh, um, from uh, one of our partners, which uh, was brought up earlier in the presentation. Um, we are there to uh, help and support um, inquiries that uh, organizations will have about the specific products. Um, as you can see here on the slide, we are a team of, uh, I don't call out that we're a team of six, but we're a team of six because that's changed um, somewhat recently. Um, between us, we actually probably are closer to 25 to 30 years of uh, IT experience and helping nonprofits. Um, really, it's about learning more about the products and services that are available uh, to and through um, TechSoup uh, as a part of a strategic advisory engagement. Um, the way that it, it informally works is, is uh, we're happy to engage uh, with, uh, we call you customers, uh, your members, um, uh, once within a calendar year um, for just general um, non um, request or order um, support instances. Um, 
if uh, going back to the quad slide earlier, um, if an organization is looking for uh, maybe some type of additional or more advanced uh, advising um, in just the generalities of technology, um, that is where uh, quad comes into play. Um, members of quad um, are able to uh, engage with us uh, on a much more frequent basis as part of um, an implied, if you will, membership benefit, um, because it, it just kind of falls in line with what our goal is of organizations being able to successfully onboard and adopt uh, the products and services uh, that they request from, not only request from us, but we do work um, with helping to identify products and services that may not necessarily be in TechSoup's wheelhouse. While we have uh, an amazing list of vendor partners, um, there are certain product areas um, where we may not have as many uh, options as, as we'd like. And understanding that we um, are flexible on our team to be able to help assist with that. Um, again, you're gonna be working with myself, one of my colleagues, um, I carry multiple Microsoft certifications, AWS, GCP, Oracle, uh, and uh, Network Plus uh, certifications. My colleagues also have uh, some as well. So we're not just um, kind of a talking point for it. We understand, we use the products, we test the products. Um, another great function of engaging, byproduct of engaging with us is insights into the latest practices and principles uh, within the nonprofit space. Um, you can see here in this paradigm, we touch everything from technology auditing, requests for proposals, scopes from work, um, basically non-managed services, but to help you kind of springboard and launch um, the things that you need. Um, so yeah, that's basically us in a nutshell. So I'm going to kick it back to you, Nick. Thanks, Kevin. And uh, I, I'm just going to I'm going to blow Kevin's whistle a little bit here. I spent a lot of last week with Kevin up in Seattle. We were attending together a Microsoft conference on AI in the nonprofit sector around the world. It was a very deep conference. We didn't talk about AI at all in today's presentation, but I think you'll see some stuff coming from TechSoup on that soon. But between sessions, um, Dozens of nonprofits were coming to the TechSoup booth, all wanting to chat with Kevin about some technical issue that they are having trouble with. And for me, it was just like this wonderful reminder of the value we actually bring to the nonprofit sector because all these nonprofits had questions that they were having trouble getting answers to out on the wide world web, the world wide web, sorry. Um, and uh, we were able to like, have a human being right there and answer those questions and get them sorted and in the direction that they need to go. So yeah, for me, it was great to watch that happen. And um, it's really, it's just wonderful to know that my colleagues are the people who have the answers who can actually help nonprofits, not just steer them in a different direction. Um, well, with that, we've reached the end of today's presentation. I, I wanna really thank all of you for taking time out of your schedule today. And, and also just to say personally, like. All of us who work in the nonprofit sector have made a, a decision to, you know, try and make the world a better place. The, the, the organizational missions we support are deeply varied and they cover all sorts of issue areas like we saw at the beginning. But, but at the core of those organizations are the human beings who, who make a specific choice to work in that um, and, and not just go out into some other um, job that perhaps may not give them the, the sense of satisfaction that, that I think working in the nonprofit sector really does. So I want to thank you all for your decision to do that work um, and for all the little ways in which you are making your community better and stronger every day. And, you know, that's what we're trying to do at TechSoup to support you in that work. Um, and uh, while today's uh, webinar is really designed for organizations who have just joined TechSoup, you know, I know some folks may have a slightly longer history, and, and in which case I hope that today's presentation was helpful. And I think there are probably some folks on the call who have not yet joined TechSoup, but they were wondering if they should. Um, and uh, I hope today answered that question in the affirmative for you. If you've not already joined TechSoup and your organization is not yet a member, please, take five minutes and go and sign up and add your organization to TechSoup. Um, the join button is in the top right corner of TechSoup.org. 
Um, and, uh, you know, you need to go through a qualification process with us before you can access the offers and services that I outlined in today's webinar. Because these things are valuable, they are only available to real 501c3 nonprofits. And so the accreditation process you go through TechSoup is really just us verifying that you are indeed a 501c3 nonprofit and eligible for these offers. So if you haven't done that yet, please do that. Um, with that, I wish the rest of your day goes swimmingly. Um, we appreciate your time and I hope we'll see you online at techsoup.org. Have a great day.